各位兄弟姐妹，大家早上好，祝大家劳动节快乐。最近我和几位工会领袖共进午餐，我问他们怎么样，他们告诉我，去年是好年头，花红加薪都还不错，当然。也有要求，也有投诉，不然吃饭没有意思。<笑>所以什么要求呢？他们有他们的担忧，为一部分工友担忧，那就是，尤其是年长工友和低薪工友。年长工友，他们担心退休之后可能无法应付生活费，尤其是医疗费用。而在年长工友当中，有许多希望到了六十五岁之后还能够继续工作下去。年纪虽然大了，或者至少可以说是大了一点点，但是他们还是希望政府能够帮助他们继续工作，而且最好能够保留现有的职位，拿现在一样的薪水。所以，这个是一组人。工会领袖担心的另一组工工友，就是我们的低薪工友。低薪工友则希望得到更好的加薪，但是事与愿违，因为他们面对全球化的挑战的挑战和科技的竞争，他们希望政府能够帮助他们争取更高的薪水。并且保护他们，不让他们在激烈的竞争中被淘汰。我向工会领袖们保证，政府一定会帮助所有的工友，尤其是年长工友和低薪工友。这个是人民行动党政府一贯的立场。过去十年，我们努力争取经济增长，以制造优质的工作，改善人民的生活。同时，我们也不断加强我们各种社会安全网，让每一名新加坡人都在这瞬息万变的世界里活得更安心，尤其是年长和低薪工友。年长工友当中有一部分属于建国一代。前人种树，后人乘凉。建国前辈无私的贡献，为新加坡带来了繁荣与进步，让大家都受益了。建国一代配套，就是我们向建国一代表达由衷的感激和敬意的方式，也会给予我们的建国前辈医疗方面的帮助。当然，受惠的不只是建国一代。也包括他们的子女，因为配套将减轻他们子女的负担。今天在场的各位，各位，看样子有很多年龄跟我差不多，或者可能比我年龄小一点。我看你们跟我一样，家里会有年迈的父母亲。你们父母亲应该都属于建国一代，所以其实你们大家都会因此。受贿。除了建国一代的配套，我们也鼓励想工作的年长工友能够继续工作下去。两年前，我们实行了退休与重新雇佣法令 （Retirement and Reemployment Act）， 简称 RRA， 就是帮助年长工友继续工作的重要的政策。这项法令实行了两年多，让我感到欣慰的是，在这短暂的时间里，已经有许多、许多位年长工友受惠了。这项法令允许工友在达到六十二岁之后，可以再就业，也一直到六十五岁。法令也体现了政府帮助年长员工继续有机会工作。
继续照顾家庭的决心。当然，我知道许多工友希望在六十五岁之后能够继续工作，这点我很理解。其实，政府本身已经开始这么做了，为公务员这么做了。在过去几年里，有将近八百多名公务员，到了六十五岁年龄，有机会继续在政府部门工作下去。但是，要是每一个人到六十五岁都能够继续工作下去，问题没有那么简单。一方面，工会领袖告诉我，工友希望保留同样的工作，一样的薪水。可是，工会领袖也告诉我。岁月不留人。到了六十五岁，我们的体能的确不一定如以前那样。年轻的时候，石油化工厂的工友，爬楼梯、爬高、爬低也没问题。六十五岁，关节僵硬了，膝盖发疼了。爬梯子没有那么容易了，要找办公室里管理控制中心里的工作。飞机维修工员年轻的时候很容易到飞机里狭小的空间转七转进转出，进行维修工作。飞机翅膀里都可以转进去，维修里面的配备零件。可是年纪大了。钻进去可能还可以，要爬出来就很困难。<笑>所以，要六十五岁之后继续工作下去，劳资双方都需要做出多方面的调整。工友需要调整心态，也需要做好心理准备，从事一些适合他们的体、适适合他们体力的工作。与其要求同样的工作一样的薪金，不如考虑合适的工作、合理的薪金。政府会尽可能帮助六十五岁以上的工友工作下去。我们最终的目标是修改 RRA 退休和重新雇佣法令，可是这个过程需要时间和雇主磋商讨论，所以。请大家耐心一点，我们会做的，但是需要一些时间。我们关心的另一组人就是打低薪工友。过去两年，紧缩的劳动市场带动了工资上涨，所有的工友工资都起了，包括低薪工友薪水。也更多提升了。不过，要继续提高工资，我们不能够单靠紧缩劳动市场。政府已经通过两个管道改善他们的生活，其实管道很多，可是今天我要关注讲的是两点：第一，就是推出渐进式薪金模式 （Progressive Wage Model）， 帮助工友提高生产力和学习新技能。让他们能够赚取更高的薪水，让他们事业上有进展、有提升的机会。渐进式薪金模式是劳资政三方合作的重点之一。在清洁业和保安业，保安业我们已经强制这个 PWM 了，强制这两种行业采纳这个新制度，为这两个领域的工友系统化的提供更好的待遇。当然，在这个过程中，工会扮演了重要的角色，因为工会代表低薪工友和资方协商，为工友争取更好的条件，改善他们的职业前景。低薪工友，尤其是安保安业，尤其是安全业和和清洁工人，不一定参加工会，不容易组织工会。但是通过这个制度，我们让工会有一个重要的角色，帮助他们提升，帮助他们争取合理的、比较高的薪水。所以这个是一项很重要的项的计划。
第二项很重要的计划就是我们就业补贴补补助计划 Work Fair。Work Fair 给予了工友全面的帮助，因为 Work Fair 包括的不只是现款，也包括公积金和保健储蓄的储蓄的补贴。这个计划已经实行将近十年了，在这期间，这项计划配合社会的需求做了改进。数额提高了，顶线也提高了。之前每月收入顶线是一千五百元，现在我们已经提高到一千九百元了，让更多工友受惠。所以，通过就业辅助计划，政府每年拨出六点五亿元的补贴，帮助五十万名工友。六点五亿元，五十万名。这是一笔很庞大的资金，是一组很大组受贿的工友。这就是政府加增强工友的收入，并加强他们的社会安全保障的主要方案。所以，很多人说新加坡没有最低工资制度，可是我们有最好的低工资制度，因为我们通过我们的制度。通过 PWM， 通过 Work Fair， 我们能够帮助工友，比实行最低工资制度来得更有效。原则上，只要工友做好自己的本分，加上政府的帮助，日后的生活可以过得更好。其实，我们的劳动队伍在世界上数一数二，非常优秀。这是几代人不畏辛劳，不断提升自己。向全世界证明我们的实力之后所换来的成就，所以不是一两天内可以做成的，是许多年的努力、的投入、的合作、的争取，才争取到这个明显世界上最好的劳动队伍。不过，今天跟十年前、二十年前、三十年前情况。已经不相同了。我们的工作态度，随着经济越来越发达，生活越来越舒适，慢慢转变了。我会见的工会领袖也有同感，他们说，工友希望能够平衡生活和工作，希望有固定的工作时间，那就是说，不大愿意轮班了。他们要更多时间松懈身心，修身养性。这个我也完全理解了，我也希望我的工作可以更轻松，不需要每晚赶功课、看电邮、批公文、准备演讲稿。不过，秘书长说：“敬业与乐业，我们有责任，我们必须去做，要敬业才能够乐业。我们不能够失去我们刻苦耐劳的精神，不能。”只想要轻松的过着好日子。如果我们在工作要在工作和生活之间找到平衡，要有更多时间和家人共享天伦，或是培养一种嗜好，我们就必须拥有更高的技能和生产力，来维持我们的竞争优势。因为我们还是必须找饭吃的，还是必须能够有效的。对国家、对社会、对经济、对自己的家庭做出贡献，因为我们的竞争对手跟我们一样渴望成功，他们都想赶上我们，超越我们。谁是这些竞争对手呢？是来自像中国、印度、越南等许许多多个新兴国家的人民，他们。非常努力，甚至比我们更加努力。他们也不介意薪水比较低，生活条件比我们差。可是他们的天赋、他们的潜能，一点都不不比我们差。所以，我们可以向往更固定的工作时间，平衡生活和工作。不过，要达到这个目的，我们必须要有本事照顾好自己的饭碗，不断力争上游。
，不轻易让其他人迎头赶上。如果我们努力奋斗，团结一致，我相信新加坡人还是可以做的比其他国家、其他工人来的出色。政府当然会帮助大家一臂之力。我们设立了就业与职业智能中心——蒂凡纳学院。就是这个新地点，这个新设施，目的就是通过持续教育和培训课程，帮助工友提升技能。蒂凡纳先生是我们的工会领袖的先驱，他建立起非共产党的劳工运动，他也担任了职工总会的秘书长，服务多年，贡献很高。为建立一个团结而富有前瞻性的工会运动，蒂凡纳同事同志的贡献功不可没。将这所学院以蒂凡纳先生命名，纪念他的贡献和精神，再也恰当不过。所以今天我很高兴，蒂凡纳先生的家人可以见证学院的开幕仪式。我总结一下，最重要的是大家必须扮演好自己的角色。我们各有各的工作都要做，无论是清洁工人，无论是德士师傅，无论是维修我们的地铁的工工作人员，或或者是巴士师傅，只要我们有我们的工作，我们有我们的责任，我们尽力而为，共同合作，我看我们可以共同达到。一个好的结果。工友们需要学习新技能，企业需要努力提高整体实力，并且致力为工友提供更好的工作和更优厚的待遇。我深信，只要我们不断努力、精益求精，就可以继续取得成功。我们建国一代就是这样为我们的繁荣和稳定打下厚实的基础。我们必须向他们致以崇高的敬意。并秉持他们刻苦耐劳、不畏艰难的精神，为我们的下一代打造更美好的新加坡。祝大家劳动节快乐！谢谢各位。Friends, brothers, and sisters, happy May Day to all of you. We've had a good year last year. The economy grew 4.1 percent, faster than we had expected. Wages went up broadly, and especially for the lower income. And we've been upgrading our environment, improving Singapore, beautifying heartland estates like Jurong, where we now are. Building, and this is a picture of Jurong, as it is with new buildings. To come, you can see the Devonai Institute, which is a brown building, in the right-hand side. Opposite it, the big green one, you can see it coming up now, is the Ng Teng Fong Hospital. Will be open by the end of this year. So this is Jurong, but we are also building things elsewhere in Singapore. Community facilities like the Sports Hub. It should look like this by the middle of the year. Lawrence Wong says it will be all right. <laughs> we are building the National Gallery. It will take a bit longer, but 2015 National Day Parade, we are going to hold it there. We are strengthening our social safety nets to give Singaporeans a sense of security and peace of mind, especially when it comes to housing, to healthcare, education. So I thank all the workers for working hard on this May Day. Singapore works because you do. And we will help every worker to achieve your best and climb higher peaks. And we will also make sure we have a good Singapore system so that it can make each person's effort count for more and our whole amount to more than the sum of our parts. When you work in Singapore, what you do is twice as effective, twice as valuable, and twice as rewarding. And one multiplier which enables us to work like this is tripartism. 
which we have painstakingly done over many years and is very difficult for any other country to duplicate. So I'd like to thank the generations of union leaders and union members who have contributed to today's success. And one special group of unionists is the pioneer generation. The first generation of leaders in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, who defeated the pro-communists in Satu. The young ones among you may not remember, but Satu. Satu means the Singapore Association of Trade Unions. They were the pro-communist group, and the NTUC, in the NTUC, the non-communist leaders, fought them to win the hearts and minds of the workers and the confidence of the workers and the trust of the workers to assume NTUC's leadership role today. Nobody appointed the NTUC. They fought for this right to represent Singapore workers, and they won it. These PG unionists convinced workers to abandon the old model of lose-lose confrontation, strikes, protests, sit-ins, riots, turbulence. Give that up. Embrace a new model of tripartite, tripartite labour relations, win-win cooperation. They rallied support for us to open up our economy to foreign investments and to create good jobs for workers. And they worked with the political leaders to set Singapore on the path to development and to change the lives of workers for the better permanently. Many of these were not just unionists, but MPs and national leaders too, like Devon Nair, Mahmoud Awang, Ho Si Beng, P. Govindasamy, and many others. Some have already passed on. I'm glad that several of our pioneers are here today. And we have, I see Brother Tan Sun Yam, FDAWU, who was a founding member of the FDAWU and helped to manage the retrenchments at the Nafi stores when British forces withdrew in 1967. I think many of you may not know what NAFI stores are. <laughs> Navy Air Armed Forces Institutes, N-A-A-F-I. And they used to provide um, goods, uh, retail products, cinemas, to the British servicemen when they were in Singapore. Big employer. So when the British left, these people were left with no jobs, and we had to find new jobs for them. And leaders like Sun Yam helped to take care of them, reassure them, and find them new ways to make a living. He also fought politically because he persuaded hotel workers from the pro-communist unions to leave the pro-communist unions, join the FDAWU, and made FDAWU dominant to represent almost all the gazetted hotels in Singapore. Oscar Olivero, UTES, Union of Telecom Employees. When Satu broke off from NTUC, he actively lobbied unions to leave Satu, join NTUC. Then, this was early 1960s. In the late 1960s, after we became independent, we passed the Employment Act. He persuaded workers to support the Act and to understand that this is going to help Singapore attract investments, and therefore help workers to get good jobs. And for many years, he was president of NTUC, starting in 1985 in the middle of a deep recession and working with the government, helping the economy to recover over a decade of growth and prosperity. Abdurrahman Mabu, UPage today, previously was a PUB staff union and he rose from shop steward in the city council staff union to be the founding president of UPage, and rallied workers to support the corporatization of PUB's electricity and gas departments. My script says in 1995, but actually we started in 1995, and for 10 years we were still working at this project because it was a very complicated project, very unsettling for workers, a lot of difficult decisions to be made, some retrenchments, many restructurings, and he offered valuable advice and support during this long process with his colleagues in UPage, including the late brother Nithi Nandan. And today we have a good, healthy electricity industry, a reliable electricity supply, affordable prices, 
and good jobs for the workers in UPH. Mr. Edwin Neto, Singapore Teachers Union. He retrained white collar workers from the British bases when the British left to take on blue collar jobs in Jurong. Foremen, supervisors, he trained the union leaders in NTUC. And when there were disputes, he prepared, helped the unions prepare cases for arbitration. So these are the pioneer generation union leaders and their stories which we should honour and respect, and especially on May Day. We salute you. I worked with some of them for many years until they retired. Our first battle together was in 1985, in the middle of this deep recession when the economy went into a nosedive. I happened to be chairing the Economic Committee, and it was my job to recommend to the Cabinet to cut CPF contribution rates to restore costs, to reduce costs and restore competitiveness. A very difficult and painful exercise but these leaders helped convince the workers it was necessary. They partnered the government to revive our economy and to lead us out of the recession. So they have more than earned their place amongst the pioneers. And I'm especially grateful to them because they have groomed a new generation of leaders to continue their good work. And that is what we should do and continue to do. And I think that is why we are honouring the pioneer unionists with other members of the pioneer generation through the PG package, which will help lighten their medical burdens and especially also lighten the burden on their children, people my age and a bit younger, many of whom are here today. And that's why NTUC is organizing events to honor all the pioneers this year. Singapore is at the turning point. Our economy is undergoing major transition. So is the society. If you compare to any other country in the world, I think we are doing well. But we are going through changes, difficult ones, and it's brought stresses and strains. Competition, anxiety, widening income distributions, worries over cost of living. So last week, I met union leaders for lunch. And they said that the economy was doing well. They appreciated policies to improve workers' lives, like the Pioneer Generation Package, like Workfare. But they could also see some worries ahead, especially for the more vulnerable workers, the lower wage ones, whose incomes they would like to see grow faster, and the low, older ones, concerned about living expenses in old age, health care, but also other living expenses. And we've been working hard, not just in the last two years, but over the last decade and longer, as these problems came up on the horizon, as we could see the issues which we're going to have. We've been working to address workers' concerns and improve everyone's lives. So Comcare, Workfare, Productivity Schemes, all these are new current buzzwords, but in fact, these are things we have been doing for a decade and longer. We've been keeping our economy competitive so that it can offer new and exciting jobs. We've been upgrading our workers through CET to take on better jobs at higher pay. We've been strengthening social safety nets to help vulnerable groups, for example, through the additional housing grant, through Medifund Silver, Workfare. And this is how we have come through crisis successfully and strengthened our position in the world. And this is what we must do together to improve all our lives. But what more was, must we do? Sui Se talks about cheaper, better, faster. I think we can also say better, better, better. <laughs> better. <laughs> better workers better jobs, better lives. Let's start with better workers. We have one of the best workforces in the world. Barry puts us number one, has done so for many years now. 
for quality of workforce. And companies also have that assessment. So I meet Rolls-Royce, which has a very good operation here, here, operation here in the Salita Aviation Park. And they tell me that the workers in Singapore are as productive as their workers back in Derby in England. We've trained there, we've worked with them, they know our quality, we know their quality. So we have, a good, we have good workers, we have a good workforce, but no lead is permanent and the competition is relentless. In other countries, the workers are also trying to be cheaper, better and faster. And it's not just in the poor developing economies, but even the mature developed ones too. And we have to know that and we have to be conscious of it and respond to it. I talked to one PSA union leader and he said it's very hard to get Singaporeans to operate cranes. So I was very happy to see we have a crane operator just now. It's as exciting as driving a racing car. But we should get more Singaporeans to feel like that because many Singaporeans don't like to drive cranes or port vehicles because you have to work split shifts and it's hard work. You may have to be in the hot sun. So this unionist visited Hong Kong port recently, Hutch, and he found there the workers, Hong Kongers, working split shifts, going for training in their own time, own money to upgrade themselves. I said, are they Hong Kongers? He says, yes. I said, why are they doing this? He said, he asked the same question. <laughs> and the answer, because the Hong Kong workers can see millions of other workers nearby ready to take their job. So if you don't do this, somebody else will do this. They don't have to come to Hong Kong. They set up in Sherco, it's close enough. They are in Shanghai, it's big enough. They are in Hong Kong, you have to work hard enough. In fact, if you are in Singapore, we also have to work quite hard. So our workforce is better, our overall system is better, but the gap is not huge, the gap closes, and we must maintain our lead to be hardworking, adaptable, ready to fight for our livelihoods, and outsmart and outthink our competitors. Technology is fundamentally changing every facet of our lives. It's transforming industries and companies. Robots are replacing not just line professionals, not just line workers, but professionals, radiologists, accountants, all sorts of jobs. Just now upstairs we had a demonstration, grass cutting. You don't go and swing a knife. You play with a joystick and the robot will cut the grass for you. And this is not in future, this is now. So all jobs are going to be changed. People talk about contract manufacturing. You make handphones, you make disk drives. But now you can do, almost make these things using 3D printing. I don't, know, don't think you can make a handphone yet, but people can print handguns using 3D printing. And it can shoot. So this is real bullets, not dummies. We have shops, retail business, but online shopping is taking over brick and mortar retailers. We have taxis, good service by taxi drivers, but there's also competition from Lyft, from Uber, from apps. Technology is changing all our jobs, and these changes are going to happen whether we like it or not. And we can't stop this change, we can't escape this change. The only way is to know which way the world is going, use this to our advantage, and get there where we need to be faster than our competitors. And that's what the government is trying to do. So pre-employment, schools, education, we are investing heavily to produce well-trained workers, whether it's ITE, whether it's a polis, whether it's the universities, whether it's the schools, Every one of our institutions has to be outstanding. We are raising this, not just for schools, but actually to go beyond that. So we have a committee called the Aspire Committee, which Indrani is chairing, and the Aspire Committee's 
job is to see how we can develop more pathways for people, whether whichever way they go in our school system, to be able to have more doors open, more opportunities, more possibilities. And you, can, you will never say, I did badly in one exam, my life is finished. There's always another chance, work hard. So pre-employment, we have to upgrade our workers. Re-employment, we have to help the older workers continue working as long as they, care, as they can, even beyond 65. And I talked about this just now in my Chinese speech. I think you've got my message. I don't need to repeat what I said. But we are fully supporting ongoing tripartite discussions to extend the re-employment age beyond 65. And we will get there. During employment, we are focusing on promoting CET for people already working. And knowledge is becoming obsolete more quickly. It's critical that you keep on updating yourself and reloading firmware. When you have an iPhone, the apps, every few days, new updates, new upgrades, old bugs fixed, new capabilities, better have the latest one. When you are a worker, we better have the latest firmware in our brains also. <laughs> you have the wrong firmware, it has a bug inside it, we have a problem. So we have to upgrade this and continue to upgrade this. And we've been working on this for some time with good results. But we were confident we could do even better putting together E2I in two good campuses with training providers, career counsellors, classrooms, under one roof. Then the workers can find the relevant trainer, the trainers can work with the workers, develop relevant courses, and we can do job matching, career development services, and workers can get advice on managing their careers. And that's why, although CET has been operating now for, I think, 10 years, we have decided to build these two campuses. The East Campus operated by WDA and the West Campus operated by E2I. And the government is funding these two campuses. We are paying for it $300 million. But I think it's money well spent. So that's why today I'm very happy we, before coming in for this rally upstairs, we launched this Devon Nair Institute for Employment and Employability. It looks a handsome building. But it's not just the building, it's what's inside it, offering services, catering to different skills and workers. I had a tour, mini tour around earlier. I was very impressed with the facilities, with the courses being offered, with the passion of the, the E2I staff, and also with the confidence and the success of the graduates of E2I, people who have come, people who have taken the courses, gone on, found new jobs, got better pay, and come back to tell their story. So it's fitting that this institute is named after Mr. Devon Nair. He was one of our pioneer union leaders who built up the non-communist union movement, served as SecGen for many years, and was pivotal in forging a united and forward-looking labor movement. This institute is a good way to honor Mr. Nair's spirit and contributions as a teacher and a unionist. He started life as a teacher, he became a unionist, and as a unionist, his passion as a teacher continued. And I'm very happy that his son, Janadas, and his daughter-in-law, Geraldine, are here today. We have another CET institute coming up in Paleba, the Lifelong Learning Institute, which will be opening later this year. This is the Lifelong Learning Institute. You will not imagine that it's a workers' training institute, but that's what we mean when we say every institute is a good institute. <laughs> These two institutes reflect our commitment to investing in our workers, help you to improve your skills and stay employable. So I strongly encourage you, take full advantage of these facilities, these services. Go, 
I asked one lady just now, why did you come for the course? She said she was working, she wanted to upgrade herself, the union recommended her, she came. I said, did you pay? She said, no, this course was free. A couple of days, she gained confidence, she's found a better job. I spoke to her, I, I would have hired her too. <laughs> ah. So I think that we should encourage Gilbert, who runs E2I, to do a good job and produce many more graduates like that. Where is Gilbert? So we can't tell our competition to go away. They want to eat our lunch, we know that. They want to eat our dinner, we suspect that. We can't stop them from wanting, but we can make sure that we can hold our own and we will eat our own lunch. And we can provide you the resources and the means to stay one step ahead of the competition. And we will have a Singapore system which we can work together to build to maximise your potential, maximise your contributions. And if you apply yourself and make the effort, you will succeed and so will Singapore. So developing better workers is one way to create better lives. But the second way is to create better jobs, to raise the value of your work, the dignity of your work. And work is better than any social safety net we can craft and is better than any social transfer that we can arrange. We will have social safety nets. We do have social transfers. We have workfare, we have unemployment arrangements, benefits through the unions, through the workers. We have MediShield life coming. But the best thing is you have a job, you have assurance for the future. And that means we've got to keep our economy strong, open, developing better companies, staying connected to the world. It's how we have become a successful city. It's how we have maintained ourselves cosmopolitan, welcoming, having a hinterland wider than our physical borders. If we were confined just to the island of Singapore, I think we would be a tiny country. But our hinterland is Southeast Asia, is Asia. We do business with the world. So we are still a small country, but our ambitions don't have to be small. We can stay abreast of what's happening in the world. We can be up there as good as anybody else. And therefore, we work closely with our neighbours on win-win projects. Iskandar Malaysia growing. We're discussing with Prime Minister Najib how we can do more in Iskandar Malaysia. In Vietnam, we have the Vietnam-Singapore Industrial Park thriving. First one was in near Ho Chi Minh City. Now. The last trip I was in Vietnam, I broke ground for the fifth Vietnam-Singapore Industrial Park, which is in Quang Ngai Province, somewhere in the middle of Vietnam. Not so well known, but we hope in time as successful. And this will be a network for us to generate prosperity and success within Singapore for our people. At the same time, we support free trade and investments, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which we have been negotiating with America, with Japan, with Australia, Malaysia, and so on. We have an EU-Singapore free trade agreement, almost done, which will expand our export markets and attract more investments here. So we want a strong economy in order for us to have good lives for our people, welcoming talent to live, work, or play here, and acknowledging that staying open brings us stresses and strains. We have to manage all these problems which come, and slowing down foreign worker inflow, introducing fair consideration framework, but we must not send the wrong signal that Singapore doesn't welcome investments or that we're turning away talent. We want to do well, we are doing well for our people. We, the best way to do that is by being open, big-hearted, confident. We compete, we can win. We are not afraid. So 
That is what we must do. That's what we have to do together. And I hope you'll understand this and help us to keep Singapore a good and a productive place for business. We are attracting good investments to Singapore. Different from the sorts we used to get before, but good investments. Higher skill, knowledge intensive, innovation driven. I went to, I go to these new projects from time to time when I can. And last year, I went to one interesting one, Lucas Firm. And this is not a scene from Star Wars. It looks like a sand crawler but it's actually, and it's called the sand crawler, but it's actually Lucasfilm's office in Singapore at Buena Vista, One North. There are, Lucasfilm produces not just Star Wars movies, but also many other movies now using digital animation and special effects. And they could have put this building anywhere in the world because you just have a broadband fiber, you connect to San Francisco, and you can do business. But they chose Singapore because we have an international talent base, because we have good infrastructure, because we have creative minds with the right skills to create amazing special effects. I visited them at the Sandcrawler in January, and I met some of the people, many Singaporeans as well as artists, animators, special effects, experts from over the world. And this is the team. I told them you should do a special effect on this team. I didn't bring it to you, but they sent it to me, and the special effect showed the front row still there, behind a huge wave was coming <laughs> to meet us from the next movie. So it's fascinating work, and they were all excited to be there. So we also must upgrade ourselves in order to be up there with those companies and to get those jobs. And our local companies also must upgrade themselves to be there. We are helping them to raise their productivity. They've been doing so for some time. And there are many schemes available. There are so many acronyms that we lose count. PIC, Productivity Improvement Credit, or Incentive Credit. <laughs> Innovation Credit. <laughs> Capability Development Grant. Tax Incentives. Inclusive Growth Program. You name it, we have it. The schemes are there, the effects are there. And upstairs, when I went around, they showed me some of the ways you have been using the schemes. Instead of having a, the expert stir the kui tiao, you have a machine spin and spin and spin and spin, and there's a, there's a paddle inside which stirs the kui tiao around. When it's ready, the kui tiao pours out by itself. You just have to sit there and eat it and many other gadgets and devices and techniques in order to upgrade the way SMEs can operate in order to make it them more productive, more profitable, and so they can offer better jobs for their workers. I think the SMEs understand this. They are beginning to take full advantage of this, and we will continue to support them to the maximum in order to be able to succeed in this very difficult job. I know they have a tough job, you know they have a tough job, your employees in them realize how difficult it is, but we will be able to help many of them to succeed together. But the companies must do your part too. On May Day, I think the message is not just for workers, but also for companies. Take advantage of these programs. Make the effort to upgrade. Your workers will make the effort. You also must make the effort. Value your workers, invest in them for the long term, upgrade their jobs, create a future for them. They are your partners, not just your employees. And share the fruits of the success with them, with the community, and strengthen the society we all belong to. Many companies have done this. One example is Function Mold and Precision Engineering, which produces molds for making consumer goods, handphones, computer casings, they decided to automate their production to lower costs. And we've subsidized them with our schemes, and it has worked. So what they do is making the molds and components, the tooling is now done by a robot. So you see the person controlling the robot using the remote control, and the robot 
picks the right cutting tools to design the mould according to spec and the robot moves faster than a human being, it makes fewer mistakes and the tool room needs less manpower. And so, as a result, the company can take on more complex jobs which pay better and make moulds not just for simple things but even moulds for contact lenses, products for aerospace, for medical technology. And I think what you will be most interested to know, workers enjoy better hours and more exciting opportunities. So with better workers and better jobs, I think we can enjoy better lives and higher incomes and living standards and an upgraded living environment, whether in Jurong East, whether in Paleba, and good public services, education, healthcare, transport, and stronger social safety nets. So my government is going to do all we can to improve Singaporeans' lives. It's what drove our predecessors to fight for Singapore, to fight the communists, to work, to build Singapore up with the pioneer generation. It's why we will continue to invest in our future and create a tomorrow that's better today. And the unions, you are in the middle of this. Fighting for the interests of workers, persuading them to support policies and embrace change which will benefit you, and working with the government and employers to take Singapore forward. So we have to strengthen the unions to play this role. You have 800,000 members now. The profile is changing. One third are PMEs. 10% are students today, workers of tomorrow. Some of them were performing on stage just now. And there's a workforce which is changing very rapidly. Today, already 30% are going to our state universities. But if you count other universities, other, course, pa other pathways, half our students get some kind of a university degree. And more and more of our people will be PMEs. By 2030, two-thirds will be PMEs. So there'll be more PMEs than there'll be rank-and-file or blue-collar workers. And there'll be more older workers. So you've got to respond to these changes, to understand the PMEs' needs, represent the PMEs, help the older workers to adjust, and build trust with the new generation. The government will continue to help the unions to do this, keeping our legislation up to date. We're amending, amend, keeping legislation up to date, like the Employment Act, the Industrial Relations Act, the Retirement and Reemployment Act, and encouraging employers to partner unions every step of the way. But unions must also renew yourself, and this is an area where we can learn from the pioneers. They were passionate leaders, they served a long time, but at the same time, they groomed their successors well and carried out smooth and timely leadership transitions. So today, we have capable leaders taking the union forward. But it carries on, and we have to keep on with this renewal. And I'm glad to see that many union leaders are making way for new blood at 62, retaining their links as advisors, as mentors, as emeritus presidents, I think these are ways we can renew ourselves and keep on tapping on the wisdom of the older generation. And that's why today we have got a good young team in charge. NTUC has four new ASGs. Patrick, Yo Guat Kuang, An Hin Ki, Zainal Sapari. They are young, but they've proved themselves. They are passionate about their roles. Please give them your support. And I should mention two more, Cham Hui Fong and Heng Chi Hao as well. Not new, but still quite young. <laughs> so we are small in size, but we are strong in unity. We are not perfect, but we are doing our best and doing better than most. So as we celebrate May Day, let's count our blessings and show our appreciation to one another. Employers, workers, government, Singaporeans. Let's commit ourselves to strive better, to do better as an economy, a society, and a nation. This is the way to a better future for better workers, better jobs, and better lives. 
Happy May Day. Thank you.